Okay, gonna talk some Demon Slayer and uh, try to conquer passion fruit with a Demerara dry float. It's got, <clears throat> I think, one and a half? Yeah, one and a half ounces of passion fruit uh, syrup, but it's also got two ounces of lime juice and up to three fourths an ounce of 151 rum here. So I think if anything can cut through that syrupy passion fruit flavor that, that kind of drove me away from the hurricane, it's gonna be this shit. <clears throat> so gonna be interesting. This is, and this comes on the side in theory, and then you add as much as you want. So I'll try it without any first, and then I'll probably just dump it all in. The other liquors are uh, Dorley's Rum and the Luxardo Maraschino liqueur. So we've tried those, but oh God. This Hamilton 151 here, we get to try that. Baby, ooh. Boop. Okay, here we go, bottoms up. Hmm. I mean, it smells strong, but it actually smells sweeter than I expected. <laughs> Holy shit. Dried my mouth out immediately. Oh my god. Yeah, that'll do it. Have water ready. Okay, so cool. I'll probably still just add the whole three fourths ounce because it's got a bunch of other fun stuff and that should, maybe I should be worried about the passion fruit not affecting that enough. Oh my God. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Um, so let's bring it in. Okay, two ounces of lime juice, fresh squeezed. What? Two. And that was like four limes already done with. <laughs> Uh, oh, well, okay, yeah, we were fancy. One teaspoon lemon juice here. Boop. Done. That's gonna make all the difference. Oh, one and one half ounce passion fruit syrup. Duh, forgot to get that out. The main event, the struggle. To defeat the passion fruit or the 151. <laughs> uh, one and a half ounces. Ooh, Chunky, thick. <laughs> Fourth ounce Demerara syrup, just the slightest touch, just the slightest touch. Whoop. And whoop. got some on my fingies. Fourth ounce of the old Luxardo. The old weird mint tasting cherry stuff. Okay. Oop, that's it's too much, but not too too much. <laughs> and finally, keeping a shut of my hands. One and a half ounces of the Dorleys. 
Yeah, so this is gonna taste like pure passion fruit for starters. Oh, I'm getting it on my hands because it's on the jigger, duh. But yeah, pure passion fruit for starters. And then I don't know what it's gonna taste like after the 151 hits. Probably not. I mean, eh, I, bet it'll, I bet it'll end up being pretty good. Prediction, I'll like it. We're getting pretty low on our bag ice. And what's at the bottom is pretty beat up, so. No blender today. I'm just gonna grab some shit and toss it in. Gene is interested. He likes some ice here and there. Doesn't always get him hype, but sometimes. Mm, take those little pieces, yeah. There we go. That should be good, I would say. And shaking it up. Ah. Yeah. Trademark passion fruit, blazing orange color. I'll need to rinse this guy first. That's what the side of danger or three fourths ounces of a 151 will be in. So pull you back out and get that set up and give the old taste test. Okay. Game on. No 151. At, I mean, I like it better than a hurricane. It's mostly passion fruit, but the lime juice comes through more because it's, you know, less passion fruit than a hurricane. And the, uh, the maraschino, you get a little, a little kiss of cherry in there, I think. So, good, yeah, pretty good. Uh, B, I, I mean, again, it's just like super sweet fruity, so it's not gonna be my total jam. So, I was called B tier, I would say. And now, let's try to hurt ourselves. Hey, -o. add that in. Give it a stir. Eugene is interested. Okay. It did it. That's really good. All you need is about a whole shot of 151 rum to calm down some passion fruit. Yeah, dude, all you get is like the back end, kind of like richness of the 151. It, that, and it cuts out the bite, the passion fruit, the lime, all that. It cuts out the painful, hideous bite that you saw me experience earlier. <laughs> of the 151, but it leaves like that back end richness. And then that, that kind of tones down the passion fruit. That's really good. Still, eh, I mean, still not totally my jam though. I'll call it A tier. B without the 151, A with it. I respect it. It's not what I would go for typically, but it's, you know, a pretty enjoyable drink, and I bet it'll get me pretty drunk on this Tuesday night. <laughs> uh, because, yeah, 151. Anyway, a Demon Slayer. So I'm watching and playing a ton of shit lately, and I finished Demon Slayer. Eugene, so cute. A while ago, a couple weeks ago, and I already feel like I kind of forgot everything, but I wanted to talk about it because I really liked it. Um, so yeah, uh, not gonna be as 
deep of a shallow dive as my one hour chat about Resident Evil. But that's a good thing. That's just, uh, I don't know, yammering for an hour about a game. That's, that's a little too much probably. But uh, anyway, Demon Slayer. Uh, really good, really awesome. Uh, I'll just start with, um, I'll just do like a plot summary. So a kid named Tanjiro was living his best life and oh no, it turns out demons exist and they kill his whole family and they turn his sister into a demon. And oh wow, it turns out this group of people called the Demon Slayer Corps exists and he's gonna join them and he's gonna figure out how to turn his sister human and he's gonna fight some fucking demons along the way. And it's, it's all really awesome. Um, so let's see. One funny thing, I guess I'm gonna start with more like story and character stuff and then maybe I'll close with like other more, more minor things. One thing I found funny in a lot of shows, I feel like this happens a lot, is um, in the beginning of the show, Tanjiro's like going to town. They live like kind of up on a mountain and there's a town below him. And I think he was gonna like sell firewood or maybe just hand out firewood because he's like the nicest kid alive. Uh, but anyway, he goes to town and gives people firewood. And they're like, Tanjiro, you're the best. And then he stays the night because like a storm blows in. And some old man tells him like, oh, Tonight's the night that demons might go hunting because everybody's gonna be in their houses and stuff. Tanjiro's like, demons? Are those even real? And then the next day he goes home and, what? Demons have attacked his house and stuff? And it's like, so like, I don't know, how coincidental. He didn't even think demons were real. He'd never even like heard of them outside of like, you know, legend. And then, oh my God, somebody warns him about him and his family's dead from demons. So I thought that was funny, but you know, you gotta have a critical event to kick off the show. He goes home, his family's all dead, except his sister, Nezuko. She's alive, but seems like something weird's going on with her. So he starts trying to take her to town. He's got her on his back, and he's trying to take her to town to get her to a doctor. What's going on? Oh shit, she got turned into a demon. So she starts trying to attack him. Tandra's like, no! Nezuko, you're just in a weird mood. Because he can't accept it. He's like too good of a dude. He can't, he won't give up on his sister. And uh, yeah, she starts trying to kill him. Lo and behold, a demon slayer shows up. Saves him, is going to kill Nezuko. But uh, Eugene, it's fine. You can't get a toy you want? You'll be okay. Um... But Tandro convinces him not to through his, like, good guy pleading and stuff. And, uh, his, like, willingness to die to protect his sister. And, um, so the Demon Slayer guy tells him to go to his old trainer, Uro Kodai, who's a fucking badass. So they go there, and his Demon Slayer training basically begins, because, yeah, you know, to find a cure for a demonism, you gotta be a Demon Slayer. You gotta be able to get up close to demons and shit. So, Urukodai puts him through some rigorous stuff. Nezuko, as it turns out, oh, one funny thing, as they're going to meet Urukodai, what do they find? Oh, a demon! Again, never thought demons were real his whole life, had hardly even heard of them. Day one, his fam after hearing about them, his family dies. Day two, they run into a demon and have to fight it. And Nezuko kicks its fucking head off. That was pretty badass. Um... But anyway, yeah, so he trains under Urukodai, and, uh, I guess, like, different Demon Slayer trainers have different forms of breathing to, like, unlock oh. your power. Yushin, you're fine! Yushin, come here! Come here! Come here! No? Okay. Um, and his, his form of breathing is water breathing, so super fluid and powerful and stuff. And, uh, yeah. He learns to master that shit, and Nezuko learns to sleep instead of drink human blood to generate, regenerate her, uh, I guess, I don't know, this life force as a demon. 
Uh, so she doesn't have to kill people. She just gets to sleep. And sunlight also kills demons. So Urukodai makes makes Tanjiro a nice little box that he can carry Nezuko in on his back. Because as a demon, Nezuko has... Like, I guess demons all get different powers. And Nezuko gains the power to, like, shrink or grow in size. So she, like, shrinks down and just gets in this little box. So the sun doesn't kill her during the day and they can just travel around. So he finishes his training and he has to go to, like, this demon slayer trial thing. Oh my god, he does it and he gets accepted. And the story kind of really kicks off in, 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 like, in truth there. Everything else was just set up. And then he's actually out on his own fighting demons and stuff and uh, trying to figure out how he can cure his sister. And yeah. I won't really spoil any of the story. I guess it's not like, there's no like huge reveals or anything, but like, you know, it's a fighty show. Like every, <laughs> so many animes are just like, there's some powerful force that's trying to kill humans that is working in the shadows. And the main character finds out about a human force fighting back against them that is also kind of working in the shadows. <laughs> Like Curses in Jujutsu Kaisen, which I'm watching now. Um, or like, the, oh man, it's been forever since I watched Full Metal, but like the Sin guys, like Wrath and Lust and all of them in Full Metal Alchemist and stuff. So uh, it's, it's that, you know, basic setup and the plot flows as you'd imagine. He fights demons, he learns more. Turns out there's a big bad demon, he's the one that they've really got to kill. Okay. Okay, Eugene. Time out, let's go see what he wants. You know, I'm not sure what he's after. He's just barking at his toys, so we got a few out. He didn't really seem to care, but I just dumped them all out. <clears throat> so, hopefully he'll find something he's after. Um, but yeah, so, the plot flows like an anime plot. But, uh, characters and some cool little nuances about them. So Tanjiro, nicest guy ever, thrown in a shitty situation, uh, has to become a demon slayer to try to save his now demon sister. He's like dealt with all that tragedy and stuff, but, you know, in dealing with demons killing his family. And it turns out a lot of demons kind of dealt with tragedy in a way too, and that kind of, or you know, sadness in some way. And that kind of um, flows into their demonhood, I guess. So, like, as he slays demons in the end, he always kind of figures out maybe why they became a demon or why they embraced becoming a demon. And, like, he, like, always sim humanizes them and sympathizes with them. So the way you kill a demon is you cut its head off with a special sword. And then it'll kind of, like turned to dust and fade from existence, but it doesn't always happen super fast. So, like, as demons are fading to dust, they'll, like, tell him, like, you know, all I wanted was a friend, or all I wanted was a family, or all I wanted was somebody to play with me. And he, like, he just, he gets this look in his eye, and he looks at them, and he, like, comforts them as they go, and, like, lets them know they're understood. And, like, you know, it's cool to humanize your enemies. And what, okay, so I missed this in the Resident Evil one, so super quick sidebar. The Baker is in Resident Evil in one part, Resident Evil 7, in one part, uh, kind of explain, you like, see them inside of like a mold vision. Eugene, there's nothing in the box anymore. Um, see them inside like an Evelyn mold vision. They explain how she, like, took them over and how they were just, like, totally normal, good people <laughs> before. So that was really cool, humanizing them. Um, but yeah, so Tanjiro doing that is super cool. And just everything about him, he's just, like, so nice and fun. Okay, that's it. What? Eugene, there's nothing. There were two balls left in his toy basket that he literally never plays with, and he was barking at them. So, he's on one right now. He doesn't like that I'm not paying attention to him. Uh, but yeah, Tanjiro, best dude, awesome main character. Like, you know, some main characters are 
most main characters are cool, but like, I might end up liking a side character more or something, but nah, dude, Tanjiro, awesome, awesome main character. Nezuko, just like, super nice, demon girl, can't really talk or anything, just tries to help her brother out how she can, sleeps a lot, uh, Urkodai, <laughs> sage wise dude, total badass, um, but there's like, there's two, I guess, like, main side characters. I think their names are Inosuke and Zenitsu, if I remember correctly. And they're both, like, super siloed into an archetype. Like, Zenitsu is the scared guy. He's a demon slayer as well. And, like, it's like, I don't know, why did you even want to do this? Because you're just terrified of everything. But it kind of goes into that backstory uh, and stuff. And, um, oh, hey, did you find it? You just wanted a, you just wanted a rawhide? Those were, to they were, they were all out there. They were all sitting there, Eugene. Oh, man. You're a little goof. Eugene just turned six. He's the best boy. I can't believe he's six. But anyway, Zenitsu. So, he's mostly annoying. How, like, he'll just see a demon and scream. He's that character. It's like, oh my god, what are we supposed to do with this demon? Oh my god, why? Tanjiro, help me. Blah, blah, blah. So that's annoying. But <laughs> his character being that, like, sets up one of the best jokes ever. I just loved it. Um, one time they're fighting this, like, spider family of demons in a forest. And Zenitsu gets, like, separated. And he's just walking around alone. And, you know, just being scared of everything. And then he hears something behind him and turns around, and it's a spider, like a big, like this big of a spider, with the head of a human baby, and it, the head might have even been upside down. So pretty disturbing, and just like ugh, looking. So he t he like slowly turns around and sees it, and the camera slowly reveals this gross spider baby. And my immediate reaction, re immediate reaction was, oh my god, what is that? And his reaction in the show is he screams, What am I even looking at? And like, uh, that was just perfect. Because like, that was my reaction. And then him, not just like screaming in fear, just screaming like, Yo, what the fuck is even going on? What am I even looking at? I thought that was choice. Um, and then Inosuke is like your stereotypical like, all I want to do is fight and get stronger. Hey, you, fight me, blah, 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 blah. So, like, he's kind of annoying in that way, too. But one super cool thing about him is, like, his fighting style and how they animate him is so awesome. So he's very, like, animalistic. Like, he wears a boar head mask thingy. So he fights, like, super low to the ground. Like, he's always just, like, doing, like, low slices and low kicks and leg sweeps and stuff. And at one point, he and Tanjiro kind of square up because uh, Zenitsu, when he first meets Tanjiro and Inosuke, is like, or no, Tanjiro, or uh, Inosuke, when he first meets Zenitsu and Tanjiro, whew, all these names, um, he's just like, I don't care that we're demon slayers, I just want to fight you guys and become stronger. So he starts trying to fight uh, Zenitsu, also because Zenitsu is protecting uh, Nezuko, who's a demon, so... You know, he's like, I want to fight that demon, too. Yeah, buddy? <laughs> Eugene, such a goof. Um, but yeah, he's beating the shit out of Zenitsu, so Tanjiro just, like, dashes in, fucking water brings, and yams him one. And then they get in a fight, and, like, yeah, it's just, he's just, like, basically on the fucking ground the whole fight, just, like, sweeping, swoop, whoosh, 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 and, like, he's super flexible, so he's, like, doing all these crazy dodges. That fight was awesome. That fight was, like, visually one of the best, like, just quick little mega anime fights. Gene, you are being so weird right now. You turn six and you don't know how to act anymore? Uh, yeah, that fight was sick. And at one point in time later in the show, they all kind of get their asses kicked and have to go through, like, a big recovery process. And, uh, I mean, Zenny too is just like, oh, everything sucks, I don't care. So, like, that's kind of fitting for him. But Inosuke is just like, I wasn't strong enough. I just feel defeated. I just want to fucking give up. And Tanjiro, being the good dude, is like, Nah, guys, we gotta go to, we gotta keep going to, 
you know, recovery and rehabilitation and training and stuff. We're going to get back out there. It's going to be fine. <clears throat> so he's always asking them to come with him to these, like, recovery sessions. And at one point, you, uh, Inosuke just goes, don't want to. He talks, like, really grumbly. And, like, him just, like, being broken there, just being like, I don't want to. Like, I thought that was awesome. They kind of, hey, they humanized the demons all the time. They kind of humanized him there. So I thought that was cool. So they're basically one-note characters, but they work in some good stuff with them, like the humor with Zenitsu and the uh, sick animation and um, yeah, humanization of Inosuke in the or uh, yeah, Inosuke in the end. Yeah, found another toy, huh? And then uh, outside of that, there's the Hashira, who are like higher-level demon slayers, and you really only get to know two of them. Decently, there's a butterfly looking girl whose name I forget, and there's Tamioka, who actually was the guy that saved Tanjiro in the beginning. He's voiced by my man Johnny Yong Bosch, Black Power Ranger in the OG Power Rangers movie, Vashti Stampede and Trigun, Zero in uh, Code Geass, guys in everything, love them. Um, but anyway, yeah, he's just like a straightforward, like, no emotion fighter guy. And they pull in some humor with his, like, lack of emotion, too. So he's cool. And then the other, the girl, here's one of the cool little, ooh, he's got his own little puppy Kong. There's nothing in it, but it's so cute. Here's, here's where some cool little, like, nuance comes in. The girl, she's, like, not a super good fighter. She's, like, more about dodging and stuff. But, uh... She knows how, she's like really good with like herbs and chemicals and shit. So she can develop poison that kills demons. Crazy. It's supposed to only be a sword, special sword that can cut their head off. But she knows how to make a poison that can kill them. So since she's not like a super great fighter or anything, her sword is like cut out in the middle. So it's just like the spine of the blade. And then at the top, there's a little bit of the front, like meat of the blade. And at the bottom... There's a little bit of meat of the blade. So, that's in my head canon. That's just to make her like faster with jabs and little flicks because she puts the poison that can kill demons on the end of her blade. So, since she's not like a super good sword fighter, it's just so she can like get in and all she has to do is get one little touch with that tip and, uh, you know, the poison will be in them and they'll die. So, I thought that was like super cool that her sword was like that. And the first time she fights a demon, she, like, pulls out the sword. And the demon's like, she can't even cut my head off with that. I'm just gonna go in and fuck her up. And then, eh, poison dead. So that was cool. Um, and her character is also really awesome. They do, as most anime do, they dive into backstories for everybody, and hers is cool, too. And she's also, like, helping another demon slayer girl that uh, is, like, a part of Tanjiro's recovery process. And that girl's cool also forgot her name but she's like emotionless <laughs> and just like yeah, just like a demon slaying robot more or less so those are all the main characters and i like them all like i said some of them are kind of stereotypical but they do enough with them to make them likable and beyond that art style baby mm -hmm. chef's kiss again i'm back on the chef's kiss train um so it's like, it's just like really defined stuff that all looks really pretty, but like double so for the characters. Like the lines are thicker on the characters, the color is brighter on the characters, so they just really stand out and pop against all these backgrounds. Like Tanjiro's clothes are so awesome. He's got like this checker pattern jacket and these like hanging like banner earrings. Like he just, he, he's such a nice guy, like I said. And he's always like got this kind look on his face, but they also make him look badass still somehow. So kudos there. Yeah, characters all just pop, and that goes triples for the fights because like you know the characters are standing out against these backgrounds, like slashing these sick swords at each other and stuff. But then it animates their attacks when they do like their breathing forms, like Tanjiro's water breathing. You'll see like a vibrant stream of water start coming out of the back of his blade 
and uh, I don't think that's actually supposed to be there. It's just supposed to be like, you know, an illustration of the power he's able to, and the technique he's able to put into his attacks when he's doing his water breathing. So there's like, he goes through different forms. I think like second form, second water breathing, second form, it's water wheel. He always names his attacks and like, they just look so cool. Water wheel is like a legit spin. So you see this big circular water wave and he just slices through everything. Zenitsu knows thunder breathing, but he only knows like one form because he's like not great. And he just, in his story, he just like basically wanted to learn sword fighting to help an old man, to like from an old man to like give him purpose or something. I totally forget, but it was never like, it wasn't like Tanjiro where he was like, I need to learn everything I can to slay demons and save my sister. He was just like, sure, whatever. But he knows like one form of thunder breathing and it's just this super electric fast slice. And like that always looks cool. And it's at one point when he's fighting spiders. Okay, so he's also terrified of everything, like I said. So eventually he like passes out from fear and enters a trance and that's when he can do his fighting. So he enters said trance in the uh, spider fight and he's like, first form thunder breathing and then the spider guy tries to attack him and he has to like dodge and then he just like tries to reset he's like first form thunder breathing and the spider guy's like he must only know that one attack all I have to do is keep him off balance so he like keeps trying to make him move and he just keeps resetting he's like first form and I thought that part was badass how he's just like so determined to get this one attack off to kill the spider monster um let's see like Tanjiro, I think, knows like 10 forms of water breathing. And then Tim Yoka at one point, because he's a, uh, you know, better version, basically, of Tanjiro. He trained under Urukodai as well. He, he says like 11th form, and you're like, oh my god, what is 11th form water breathing? So that was badass. Like, they just do a really good job with everything. One of the Hashira that you see, you don't really see any of them outside of the uh, butterfly girl and Tamioka do anything, but one of them looks basically like a fire person. Like, his hair looks like fire, so it's like, he's probably gonna be like fire breathing. So give me that shit in season two. Uh, yeah, so that'll be cool. Um, and Inosuke's beast breathing. And one thing he does is like, I think he can like smell or something like that. He pinpoints an, an one of the spider people in this in the forest that they're fighting them in using I think like his sense of smell with beast breathing. But yeah. I don't think he ever does any like attack techniques. He might with the whole beast breathing thing. But even if he doesn't, like I said, all his shit looks super cool. So that's that. Tried to get through it quick. Demon Slayer's awesome. Judging by the internet, I think everybody's seen it. And the, new, the movie just came out and that's supposed to be awesome. I'll probably wait till I can find it somewhere on the high seas or something. Uh, but I'm excited for it. So yeah, Demon Slayer. If you like fighty animes, shonen stuff, sword stuff, give it a go. You're gonna, you're gonna like it. It's just quality throughout. Um, and the old Demerara dry float here, well, like I said, not really my thing, but a solid take on a passion fruit beverage. And honestly, as I've been drinking it, the passion fruit just like builds up in your mouth. So even though it's not as punchy initially, it's still gonna have its way with you in the end. So yeah, I mean, a half ounce of passion fruit in some drink, I would probably like. But when you get above that ounce range, it's just potent. But anyway, yeah, pretty quality. And like I said, if you like that type of flavor, you'll like it. And if you like stiff ass rums, you'll like an aspect of it. You might not like it because the stiff ass rum doesn't come through a bunch, but give it a try. If you're in a tiki groove, if you're trying to experiment with some tiki stuff, I think the Demerara Dry Fruit Float is definitely worth a go. All right, uh, I got a bunch of puggy toys to clean up and I don't know, might watch something or play a little something before I go to bed, but everybody have a really good fucking day.